So Jaquis is him, her, or androgynous? In this production, it's her. Although, somebody did say, were you a man? And I went, well, I had long hair and lipstick. I don't know. I was in pants. <laughs> I said, you know, that's very interesting, though. It's very interesting that, that you thought maybe I was playing a man uh, because I was playing it straight. Straight meaning I wasn't really effeminate and I wasn't really masculine. I was kind of just me as a human being. That's what's interesting about playing these roles that are written for men, because they were all written for men, really. Men were going to do them. Uh, but y you're not the emotional vessel. Uh, when you're a woman in Shakespeare, often you're the emotional vessel. You weep, you cry, you feel. You, uh, the unnatural women, Margaret and Henry Sixes, you know, the warrior queens, Reagan, Goneril, uh, to a certain extent, Lady Anne, but she cracks because she, because she, because she Ooh. cracks. She couldn't, well, she didn't have, she didn't envision what it would actually do to her, I think. And so her whole personality fragments inside and anyway. But, but these are called unnatural women. By whom? Shakespeare. Or the characters in Shakespeare. You unnatural hag. Ah. You unnatural something. So if there is ambitious, ambitious drive or, you know, and Margaret does go into the battlefield because she's so frustrated with her husband who's giving away the kingdom and her son's inheritance, and it's for her son, uh, that they're called unnatural. So to actually play, you know, I played the chorus in Henry V, and I played Jaquies, and I played Richard III. And Richard III was a huge revelation because, first of all, I, I, it wasn't like I want to play every male role, but Richard III, to me, you know, we talked, Miles directed it, and it, we talked about him, her, it, being the epitome of vice, which was the character that Shakespeare was, the tradition that he was um, creating Richard around, which was to create havoc, chaos, for the hell of it, almost. Now, yes, we can say psychologically, yes, he was, he was born misshapen, he was inside as well as out, but everybody refers to him as animals. They describe him as an animal. And so it was not important to me whether you thought of it was a he or a she. I had a balding pate, so I did anything to make me look as non-female, but it was basically to be non-female, not necessarily masculine. You know, Peter Hartwell was the designer, and we designed a large, built-up shoulder. So my right, my right arm, because the first thing you have to decide as a Richard is which arm is going to be shriveled if you do that. Some don't do any, but usually it's if you wield a sword with the right hand, then it's got to be the left. So this side was built up to look quite masculine, so that this side could just do that. And then it seems quite small. So you literally didn't think man, when playing Richard III, my huge regret I didn't see it. Huge regret. Uh, you didn't think man or woman? I thought creature. I thought being. I thought human being. So the Lady Anne is just a predatory relationship? Lady Anne is, is as it is, is, is power. Lady Anne is children. Lady Anne is, you know, you know whether Lady Anne is, is um, alliance. Lady Anne is I can do it. Look at me, I did that. So would you have a penis between your legs in your imagination? No. I didn't. It was immaterial to me whether I had a penis. My, 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 my weight was lower because I did think male that way. The body carriage is lower. Also the rolling walk that I did and I you know, would find the right walk for me and, and uh, um, work with Wendy Allnut and with Kelly Alexander. We w tried a couple of things out and for me it was, I didn't wear a splint or anything that would keep me like that even off stage. So whatever I did, I could just let it go off stage because I was not going to destroy my body over this role. That was up to Mother Courage <laughs> for next year. But uh, I wanted to uh, release. So it was a rolling kind of gait. And also it's in the rhythm, really, that you have a limp, that the rhythm is off when you walk. So that I could also be imperious if I turned this way, and I could also be like that, subservient and, you know. Richard, first and foremost, is an actor. He is an imposter, an imposter. 
And just being a woman playing a man is just one other level around the envelope. The audience knows another secret. I'm a woman playing Richard, who's playing a good guy, who is a bad guy. So it's just the level of pretense goes one level further. You know, people thought, you know, some people thought I was trans. Some people thought I was uh, 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 neither a hermaphrodite. Some people, some guy, some woman was very angry because a guy at preview said, well, the guy playing Richard's okay. He's a bit, you know, gay. <laughs> right? Wow. So, so uh, I wasn't trying to be really butch, but I was trying to think like him. And so I would have this ball paint and this kind of red splotches, like, you know, like, like you come through without forceps or something, you know, so the face. And some days I thought, well, I don't look too bad. But that was because I hadn't yet seen the world the way Richard does, which is like this. It's like that. It's bleak. 